So here I'm going to go over bullet analysis because typically this may be found at the crime scene. Uh, and how do you go about analyzing this and what do you kind of look for in the bullet? And also I'll cover the cartridge just for a little bit because there are some similar markings. So first off, the bullet anatomy is important to understand. First off, the bullet remembers the actual projectile. So it's actually the point that's being fired. The case is the holding container. The powder of the charge is the source of the explosion energy. The primer is the igniter. That's what the initiates the whole the process. The wad for shotgun shells is a plastic separator between the pellets and the powder. We see that located here. Note this is present in shotgun shell blanks and can potentially be deadly at close range. So even if you have a shotgun shell blank, meaning it doesn't contain any bullets, the water, that plastic portion, does come out of the barrel with quite some force. And if you're in close range, that can be deadly. So don't think, again, that a shotgun shell blank is necessarily not deadly. That wad can definitely, um, if it impacts someone, can definitely cause death. Now the rifling. So when we're talking about a bullet, we want to be thinking about the rifling of the barrel that it's traveling through. So in firearms, that rifling is that helical kind of grooves that are machined in the inter interior or bore surface of the gun's barrel. So we see the barrel here, we see a cutaway, a nice little cutaway uh, located right over here. And you can see that rifling. That rifling causes the bullet to spin uh, the projectile around the longitudinal axis during the shooting to help it stabilize. It's kind of like throwing a spiral on a football. Uh, but when it goes through this, kind of travels here at a very high rate of speed, it is spinning, there is going to be some markings that do occur. So looking at gun barrel rifling, well traditionally sharpened lands and grooves are replaced by less pronounced hills and valleys, so the barrel bore has a kind of polygonal or hexagonal or octagonal cross section profile. We kind of see here eight conventional groove rifling on the left and octagonal polygon rifling on the right. So there are some slight differences uh, that can occur, but these differences, if you know how to uh, look and identify them, can help you correlate or match up the potential barrel that was fired from uh, that bullet traveled through. There's also something called Glock rifling, which is a some weapons. Glock pistols is just a name brand. Uh, do not make usable striation patterns on fired bullets because they use that poly polygonal rifling instead of the conventional rifling. So one group of eight consecutive matching strike in agreement would be considered a match, matching evidence uh, for tool marks for this type of rifling. Basically, you're going to have a little different pattern that's going to be developing because of the type of uh, bore that this rifling kind of has. So it's going to be a little different set of rules or a little different ways to be able to match those bullets up to that particular barrel. Now the firing pin and ejection mark. So again, I know we're getting a little bit away from the bullet here, uh, but if you find the bullet and you find the gun, uh, you could find the casing as well of, the, of that cartridge. So the firing pin here and, little, and where A is pointing to, that leaves an impression when it strikes the primer. It's so kind of the hammer point. Uh, where it strikes the casing cartridges of the rim and of rim fired cartridges. So this would be again a center fired uh, uh, casing here, um, cartridge, so this would be important to kind of identify. If it was rim fired, it'd be off to the side. Now you might be looking at B saying, well, why is it, if it's the center fired, why is there a marking here? Well, B is referring to the ejection mark. They're caused when the cartridges are ejected from the firearm and can be used to confirm passage through the firearm if found at the crime scene. And we also have chamber marks. So these are found throughout the outer side of the casing and are the result of irregulars inside the walls of the firing chamber. So again, these are just some different patterns that you might see in the actual casing. Uh, so keep in mind the bullet's gonna have marks. That's a great place to look, but also do not forget about looking at um, the actual casing uh, as well for different marks. They have breech face marks. This is where this kind of bolt face signature where that end kind of comes in contact after the, when the explosion occurs. And when the firearms discharge, this kind of rearward movement or recoils result of the pressure being generated in the bullet going out the barrel, but this is coming back. And you can see there's also some distinctive patterns that can be left. This action at the base of the cartridge will hit the breech of the firearm, leaving a mark that can be categorized. This can, again, help you match up uh, the potential firearm that fired um, that bullet or that, in this case, this particular um, casing.
Looking specifically at the bullet, there'll be striations. I mentioned that rifling uh, in the barrel. There's going to be striations left on that bullet. This acts as the gun's fingerprint. Even the same make and model of firearm will produce distinct uh, striations. This pattern will typically hold true even over time. So it's really important that when you recover the bullet, you don't do a lot of physical damage to it because these very distinctive striations are kind of like the fingerprint uh, to that gun. As I mentioned, there's lands and grooves. Those that lead to the rifling. Uh, so it's important that the lands are the raised portions between the grooves inside the barrel after the spiral grooves cut into and produce the rifling. Now, exactly how they're oriented or how they're tilted can tell you if it's a right twist or a left twist um, of that bullet, which again can help you match up the potential barrel or firearm to the bullet that it was fired from. These unique characteristics, so the number of lands and grooves, usually four to six, but can range from two to 22. Just the number can help you, again, match them up. The diameter of the lands and grooves is something you wanna look at. The uh, width of the lands, the depth of the lands and grooves, uh, degree of the twist. Uh, the number, twist is the number of inches the board is required to complete a rifling spiral. And you wanna be kind of using a comparison of a known and a kind of what was found at the crime scene. You can see here, this kind of matching occurs typically with a comparison microscope because it is really done on the detail level. So again, these are just some unique characteristics to help you kind of identify or match up kind of the fingerprint, if you will, of the gun or barrel to the particular bullet found at the crime scene.